Welcome to the Speaking Podcast. You can find all our episodes on speakingpodcast.com. We're also on BitChute and YouTube. You find the links in the podcast description. I'm also a podcasting coach because I've got four other podcasts, the Meditation Podcast, Learn Polish, the Crypto Podcast, and the Awakening. Where I'm exposing fraud and corruption, but the solutions, you find everything on bio.link forward slash podcast. I guess that I'm looking forward to this because I'm writing a few books. It's basically <laughs> a book coach, award-winning publisher, known as the book professor. Please welcome Nancy Erickson. Thank you, Roy. I'm so glad to be here today on your speaking podcast. So I suppose you might just let the listeners know a little more about Nancy. Yeah, well, okay. So I own two book-related businesses. One is called The Book Professor, and that's where we help people mainly people who are first-time authors and who aren't really writers. Um, we help them to write what we call high-impact nonfiction books. And those are books that will either save lives, change lives, or transform society. I also own a nonfiction publishing house here in the U.S. called Stonebrook Publishing. And we, um, we publish our author's books who come through the book professor, but we also publish many other authors' nonfiction books. So that's kind of it in, in, in a nutshell, what we do. We take you, it's kind of a one-stop shop. We take you from your idea all the way through uh, planning out your book manuscript to writing it, editing it, and publishing it and distributing it worldwide. Brilliant. And I we're definitely going to delve deeper into that. And I want to just say for those that are actually watching either the video YouTube, YouTube, but also on Spotify the video, you can see the beautiful background. And we actually were discussing it prior to recording, but you might let them know a little bit about that yeah, because I think so, it's fantastic. Uh, yeah. So uh, my the wall behind me is filled with book covers. And I told Roy that every time we issue a book from Stonebrook Publishing, I reward myself with a metal print of that book cover. And over time, my walls have gotten filled with book covers. And I'm, I'm kind of a project-oriented person. So in order to remind myself that I actually get things done, I like to look around at my walls and say, hey, we've we've accomplished something here. So it's um, it does make for, um, anyway, it's, I don't know. And also when I kind of glance up at my walls around, I think about each author and where we started and where they are now. And many of them had the goal to be public speakers and their book could really launch them in that direction. Excellent. And I mean, because I love marketing, I read a lot of books on marketing. And it's not something that I've thought of till I see what you do. But I mean, people should have their own book as whether it's that size or a smaller version on their fridge, because everybody goes into the house, but not everybody will look at a bookshelf. And it's a good That's way of right. actually kind of marketing yourself. That's right. It is. So I suppose let's kind of go into your speak, because I know you've spoke nationally and internationally, but let's go back and just kind of give me your full kind of speaking journey, how you kind of overcame, or were you ever shy about speaking, and what's your full journey? Well, of course, I was terrified at first. I mean, like, terrified. So it all started when I, um, this is actually my second career. When I graduated from college, I was went to work for IBM as a systems engineer, and as part of our training, we had speaker training. And I can remember, <laughs> I was so terrified. And at the time I wore contact lenses. And so I thought, if I take my contacts out, I can't see the people and I'll be a lot more comfortable. <laughs> so um, that was kind of frowned upon <laughs> as I'm tripping all over the stage. But, um, you know, I had a few other opportunities um, in my tech career. But when about, uh, I guess it's been about 17 or 18 years ago, I took a turn in my career because wh what happened, I, I was working for Oracle Corporation at the time and my dad was diagnosed with a terminal brain tumor and we knew that he would only last about seven months. So I quit everything and went to be with my parents during this time and a little bit after the transition with my mom. And when I got back home, I was like, oh my gosh, I quit my job. And instead of that feeling like, oh, well, no, what am I going to do now? I was like, I can do anything I want now. And so I always loved writing. I'd had some things published when I was younger. And so I thought I want to hone up on those writing skills. And I was looking through college catalogs at writing courses. And I thought, you know, I've already done that undergraduate work. So I ended up going back to school and getting a master's degree in writing. 
And um, when I graduated after two years, they actually asked me to join the faculty at that university where I graduated and teach writing. So at the same time I was starting to teach, I also started the nonfiction publishing house, Stonebrook Publishing. And we had some really great hits out the shoot. And for example, the first book that we published was written by a Holocaust survivor who'd gone to school with Anne Frank. And when the book was published, we did the book release in Amsterdam at their school. This is the first book. And I was like pinching myself. Now, you're in Poland. Amsterdam is a really long way from St. Louis, Missouri. So it was very international and such. And um, that was really remarkable. Um, and that book is still being used in the education market as a companion to Anne Frank's diary. And then the second book we published was we got back cover endorsements from Sir Paul McCartney and Cindy Crawford. And I was like pinching myself. I'm like, I guess we know what we're doing. And the we is really I, you know, <laughs> when at that time I was a solopreneur and was hunting and pecking my way to find my way. And I was really excited about it, but there was an issue. We were getting a lot of manuscripts that would actually touch on what we wanted to accomplish, which was published material that would either save lives, change lives, or transform society. But they were so poorly written, we couldn't do anything with them. And I, you know, we were sending out all these rejection letters all the time. And that I I was really burdened by that because I kind of I felt once I heard what these people had inside them. I felt a responsibility toward helping them. And so what I did is I took a step back. I, we didn't publish anything for a year. And I wrote this tiny step by step by step by step by step process that would allow people who aren't writers to become authors. Yeah. And that became the other the business called The Book Professor. And so since then, we've helped lots of people. So during the whole process is getting back to your question about my speaking <laughs> path. Um, because I was in publishing, I was asked, I'd been asked to speak a lot of different things, like at the, um, the book fair in Germany and, um, you know, other places around the United States where they would have writer conferences and such. And the, the funny thing is, so flashback to my IBM days when I didn't want to see the audience. Once I knew, I mean, I knew so well what my material was here as the publisher and the, the creator of this process, you couldn't get me to stop talking on stage. <laughs> you know? And I, I was able to really uh, meet a need that it seemed like nobody else was meeting. People who had incredible messages, whether it's something they've overcome or something they've been through or something they've developed in their business or a really impactful book that could help them launch their speaking career. And we realize it's a we now because I have teams and teams of people that we're really filling a need for people who want or need a book to help them in their business that that has not been met before brilliant brilliant and you mentioned about uh you know when to take out the contact lenses and i believe that's why a lot of the musicians have the dark glasses because a lot of them are actually very shy and it's strange how we actually think you know they can't see us but yet it's just the eyes it's like so does fear come through the eyes it might be yeah it could be yeah. i don't know so like with with the different uh, books, because I know you're kind of talking on things that touch people. I'm just curious with like, because my awakening podcast, I, I bring on a lot of guests on stuff like that, but I'm also exposing a lot of different things. And I kind of experience a lot of censorship. Is that, does that happen? Or do you kind of keep away from touchy subjects? Oh, heavens no, we don't keep away from touchy subjects. Um, and it depends, you know, I don't know what's touchy to one person isn't to another. But this is one of the things that we really help 
our authors work through is that a lot of them have really hard stories and there's been things that they have happened to them or things that they've actually initiated that created problems. And you know this from speaking, you've got to be transparent with your audience. You have to let them really get to know you. And if you're just, well, it doesn't work anymore to stand up in front of a bunch of people and tell them what to do. Nobody's going to listen to you or learn from you if they don't know you. And so we help people to work through those things. And for example, I've worked with authors who had really rough childhoods, really rough. And they're like, but I can't mention this person's name. And if I do, you know, what's going to, who's going to read it and such. And so I always tell our authors that the first time through on the first draft, write it raw. And I'm saying R-A-W, just as you experienced it, name names, get it out there. When we go back and edit, we may change, you know, pull out the names and plug in the relationship, my sister, my friend, my mother, my cousin, so that you're not, you know, digging into that individual so much, but more mentioning the relationship. But what we, you know, any material, nothing's off limits as long as it fits our criteria that the material will either help change lives, save lives, or transform society. So what all of our authors are doing, and I think what everybody with integrity is doing in business is offering people two things, and that's hope and help. Um, and that's, you know, Ray, you're doing, Roy, you're doing that through your podcast. You know, you're offering people hope and help to get from where they are to where they need to be. We're doing the same thing as we are guiding you and holding your hand and pulling you through the whole process to write your nonfiction book. And like, I don't think people, because I publish, well, I didn't publish, I've just done a podcast planner, but through the process of doing that one on Amazon, because I was doing it on different languages, like that's not easy. I mean, they kept coming back, even though we're doing the exact same thing. Like they're not easy to deal with. So I think having somebody like yourself taking people along, it takes out the pain of that because obviously with all the experience, I had a graphic designer. I couldn't understand how frustrating it was. Yeah. And all you have to do when you work with us is just do that step for that week. And then the next week is the next step. And it's all iterative. It builds on top of each other. But the thing that has proven to be of great value to our clients is that the way we construct your book, um, we construct the chapters in problem solution sets. So what do I mean by that? So as we're start planning out your book, you know, you name all the problems that your clientele is likely to have. And then through a very story driven methodology, you present your solutions. So it's a lot of storytelling, which is speaking is as well. But here's the differentiator when you work with us. When you're finished, you have a book that has all these chapters and each one solves a problem. So you should be able to take every chapter from your book and repurpose that material to create other revenue producing products, such as, you know, keynote speeches, seminars, workshops, online training, online courses, um, video training, whatever. And of course, you know, also gives you material for blog posts, which is not, that probably won't be producing any revenue, but we like to build off that first professional product, which is your book. And then, you know, you can launch your message across multiple venues after that. Because honestly, everybody who's in your target isn't going to read your book. So the idea is to meet those people where they're already engaged. And with the marketing then, because like it's a lot of the times it's a case of, yeah, you have the book, you just go and do your own marketing or is there kind of advice and kind of tips as well regarding the, the marketing of the book? Yeah. So during the course of the step-by-step -step process through the book professor, we introduce you to various ways to market your book. Now we don't do book marketing. We are strictly on the creation end of this product for you. 
However, I have <laughs> many, many marketing partners and every couple of weeks I have a marketing moment broadcast where I bring those people on and they're teaching you different ways to market. And you know what? One of the ways that's really becoming effective now, Roy, is what we're doing right here is being a guest on a podcast and our authors are finding a lot of traction that way. And that's fun. Brilliant. I see your chart on your website, the whole shebang. And I think it's actually yeah. brilliant the way it's done. I just show it up there for those that are watching. But you might just touch on that because it, it's like you simplify it in a way that makes it easy. But I know from going through the whole process myself that it can be overwhelming at times. Right. So showing you that, it, it tell, tells you about the different steps. Like the first part is to plan your book. And then the second part is to write your draft, then to uh, polish it up with self-editing. Then there's after you're through with your manuscript, you have your final manuscript. There's another important, no critical step that must be done and that's a professional edit. And so we have incredible editors. And what, what we do is um, we make edit your book to make it um, ready for publishing. And it has a lot to do with just changing up a little bit of phrasing or language or grammar is a big deal. <laughs> To, but here's the thing is that your book has to be, you want your book to do three things for you. It should establish you as an expert, increase your credibility and help attract a following. But if you don't have, if there are any errors in it or it's improperly um, constructed or your grammar's bad, you're going to trash your credibility instead of increase it. So we have a very professional process that we take you through. And part of that is editing your book. Then. Um, we flip over to Stonebrook Publishing because now all of the activities that relate to publishing your book start taking place. And so the first thing we do, two things actually simultaneously, is design your book cover. And we usually give you about four original book cover designs to choose from. And you know we work with you on kind of what the look and feel is that you're going for. But you'll pick one of those designs and then we keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking it until it's exactly what you want. At the same time, your book is going through proofreading. Now, proofreading is really critical and it's one of the steps that a lot of self-published authors skip. Editing and proofreading are often not, you know, they don't engage in that and that degrades the quality of their, of their product. But um, we go through, it goes through two different proofreaders and the idea is get any mistakes out of it. So once we have the book cover design and the proofread um, text, then we have a whole entirely different team of design artists working on the layout of the book and start noticing the interiors of the book. They're all designed. And some of them, a lot of um, like self-publishing sites let you pick a template for that. But ours are all original designs. We'll take the uh, elements of your book cover and carry it through to the interior design. So after that, everything's all set, sort of. <laughs> and then we print, actually print a proof copy of the book. One goes to the author and one is for me because I read every single thing from cover to cover that goes out of our publishing house. And we usually find a few more things because I you probably had this experience, Roy, that it's a lot different when you hold your book and you're reading it versus like reading a Word document or on the screen or whatever. And some things can kind of jump off the pages like, oh, dang, how did we miss that? So it goes through one more round of corrections and then we distribute your book worldwide, um, our Distribution Partner is the largest book distributor in the world. You may be familiar with them. They're called Ingram Publisher Services. All pu professional publishing houses use them. And um, at the end, we even do, we do all the legal work to file your copyright with the U.S. Library of Congress, which is really the kind of central place um, throughout the world where people copyright their books so that your intellectual property is protected. So that's it kind of from soup to nuts. A lot of, well, most people don't really understand everything that's involved, 
but and we we show you the long view of what all's involved from everything from soup to nuts but the good news is you're not responsible to do any of it except write your book and that's where we're holding your hand and leading you through the entire process one of the things that you wrote that i wish i had seen prior is i remember when i'd done my book and i got a proofread and everything and the amount of errors I will spot. If I get anyone's book, I will. if there's one error in the book, I will spot it. I Loads of times people give me books, I can spot. I must have had thousands. It was embarrassing. And because I was reading it in my head and yeah. read it aloud. You do. Oh, I am so glad you said that, Roy, because the way to proofread your own work is to read it out loud because your ear will catch things that your eye doesn't see your brain is going to fill in those gaps and make it look perfect. But when you start reading it out loud, even to figure out if it's kind of a clunky sentence or something, if you can't read it, you need to rewrite it. Um, but you are right. You're right. Yeah. I, but on the other hand, here's the beauty of digital publishing. When you see those errors, um, you can go back to your own books and correct those in your file and, and upload again. No, brilliant, brilliant. And like, there's some kind of, I, I don't know what you call them, companies or individuals. They, they put a group of 10 or 20 individuals together to create a book. And, oh, yeah. It's called anthologies. Right. Yeah. So like what I've seen from my own experience and kind of being kind of attempted to get in is a lot of times they're charging people like three grand per person and everything is if like, oh, we'll get you if kind of best-selling author and all this kind of thing but a lot of it is they're not really interested in the thing and they do nothing later it's mainly they're making their money on the initial grabbing in people like have you seen that many times and i'm not a fan of that approach so what you're talking about is anthology books where every a different writer writes a chapter and so they maybe they have an overarching theme you know, for every chapter, but the person who is compiling the anthology charges you whatever amount, and they're the ones that are making the money. The other thing, too, is that you don't own the copyright to that material. They copyright it in their name, and I'll, I'll tell you mainly why I'm not a fan of that approach. It's because it doesn't do anything for you. If you're going to write a book, you want it to work for you, and I don't even know who reads those anthologies. I, I think it's kind of a little bit of an ego thing that draws people in, but it doesn't do anything for you. It, I don't, I've never seen it advance anybody's career or help them get speaking engagements because I don't know, it's just not about you and it's not your effort. And you mentioned something else, Roy, that I would really like to pour cold water on. And that's, the idea of an Amazon bestseller. I want to tell you right now, it means nothing. It means nothing. And what happens, and particularly in those anthologies, is they reduce the price of the book to like US dollars, uh, 99 cents or $1.99. On one day, they get everybody in their entire life to buy a copy. And for maybe one minute, it shoots to the top book in whatever category it is and then an hour later it's nothing or the next day nobody ever buys it again and so that's a trick that some book marketers will try to lure you into there's a lot of ego stroking in this business and that's certainly one way to do it it doesn't mean anything and it's like i don't know i just I, no, they do that with the. I've seen that. loads of people doing that with the Kindle, I mean, they, and they get the people in the book to do the marketing to their list. So they're basically, yes. and I've yes. also seen where they they charge them to sell the book, and they say it's at a discount. And I know the price of actually, so they're actually even making money from the oh, authors. They don't get any royalties, and it's like they're getting slapped left, right, and center the way I see it. So I don't. I am not a fan of the anthology approach at all. I think. For pick, particularly for speakers, um, when you're competing and you are competing for stage presentations, it makes a huge difference if you have a book. I mean, a huge difference if you have a book. And um, 
but it's only going to make a huge difference if your book is really well done. Again, you want your book to um, enhance your credibility and establish you as an expert. So a really, really well done book product will lead the way. And so what we tell our authors is that, hey, instead of selling your book at the back of the room, you probably want to be engaging with the audience when you're finished. So why don't you do this? Why don't you include a copy of the book for every person in the audience in your speaking fee? And then they automatically get it. And so they're going to have something to carry away that's about you. And a lot of our speakers are, they have their own coaching businesses or their consultants, and they would like to get the audience to work with them. And then they have, some, every single person has your book to take away as a reminder. It's not a flyer and it's not a business card. It's a book. So there's something more substantial there. And then you can engage with your audience. And so I have, um, here's another really cool story about a few years ago, I was working with a um, man who was already doing public speaking. And then when we finished his book, as part of his, uh, I guess you would call it application, speaker application, he would always include a copy of his book, which got some attention. But then simply because he had his book in one year, he was able to increase his speaking fee three different times to where he was coming out more than double what he had originally charged. And it was, he attributed to having a book that was well done and, you know, perfectly published and such. So he used, he started uh, structuring his fees in a way, okay, here's my speaking fee, but for only this amount, I can get you extra. You can have a copy for everyone in, in the audience. And I think nine out of 10 times people take the books too. So, mm -hmm. and he can charge list price for the books. And when you're an author and you're doing digital publishing with us, when you order books for yourself to sell in speaking arrangements, you only pay the print fee, which may be like, you might list it for $19.99 and the print fee, the charge to you to get copies of your book might be between three and $4. So there's a big margin there that also contributes to your revenue. Absolutely. And just curious because... I get a load of my books uh, from Amazon. Not a big fan of Amazon because of just to how they operate and everything. But what I've seen is there's been a few books that I've got. They were 700 pages and Ooh. they fell apart immediately. But yet I, because the content was so good and you know, you can't contact them. So it would just take so much time to be sending it back. And I just kind of accepted it and was disappointed. But I ordered the same book from my mother and it was printed in the UK. This one was printed in Poland. And it was perfect. You could see the difference. And like, it's for a company like Amazon to be giving out crap like that. It's a, it's a, it's a shocking. I don't know if you ever experienced that yourself. Yeah. Well, we don't, Amazon doesn't print our books. Ingram does. So the way it works when someone orders off Amazon, Amazon will send like an EDI order to Ingram. Ing Ingram prints and ships it. So we haven't had issues with low quality like that or variable quality. That's, that kind of hurts too. You want to you want to have control over the quality of your books. No. So my what I imagine is that they have a different print facility that ships to Poland versus no. They, uh, they actually it's in Wrocław. It's in Poland, and okay. yet I got my hardcover. They wouldn't allow me to order the author's copy from Poland. I had to get it from Germany, even though I've got Prime, and yet it was printed in Poland. <laughs> it's like everything they do is a bit kind of hairy fairy to be honest with you and with ingram then do they put it out because i i know where did i read it on your website there's something like 123 kind of um digital places to be yeah yeah if you choose to do an ebook too yeah there's a it, we uh distribute to all the different um digital platforms so like um of course amazon kindle is popular and barnes and noble the nook um, Kobo is really popular in uh, some other countries that aren't the U.S., like Canada and uh, um, Australia, New Zealand, et cetera. So we distribute to those, you know, through Ingram as well. Yeah, and might be a touchy subject, but I had got my 
a planner in Spanish, in uh, Polish, English, and also Russian because, you know, and they wouldn't allow me to put it up in Russian. And I, you know, because of what's going on. And I think that, like, what, you you torture everybody that's actually, you know, so any entrepreneur, so I'm not sure if you know, does that happen with Ingram? I'm not aware of that. Um, I think Amazon is the one who has made the decision not to do business with Russia right now because they're an American company and we're not really very friendly with them right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's a, it's a strange one. And so like it's worked it definitely with all the different um, digital versions, you know, cause sometimes people think, Oh, I put it on to three or four, but I suppose it's like the podcast. Cause I mean, when I know there's a different platform, I just put it out there because you're just putting it there and it's there and you don't right. know where people are. Right. Oh, right. Exactly. And the other thing is that you have, access to when you work with a professional publishing house is there's a kind of a back room website called books in print and i only say it's back room because only publishers have access to it where you you upload all your information and it goes to catalogs that um, serve libraries and you know different kind of public facilities and stuff so that they can order from your your book as well so I mean, libraries are actually the largest purchaser of books. And, um, you know, so we want to make sure that when we're casting our wide net, that our seeds go everywhere, you know, just like what you were saying. Oh, brilliant. And just curious with audiobooks, then, is that something that you encourage your writers to do and in their own voice? Or it, does it depend on if you think they've got a, a nice kind of listening voice? I absolutely think audiobooks are excellent. In fact, because I read all the time for work. When I'm consuming books for pleasure, it's always audiobooks. And I do want to, I'm glad you asked the question about whether the author should perform the work or you should hire a professional voice actor. And I'm always going to lean on the side of a professional voice actor unless you have had that kind of training. And the issue becomes accents and... Um, like an Irish accent. <laughs> well, no, actually, that no. Uh, well, I'm talking about more. We've got a lot, a variety of. Accents. Well, I know I. A lot of people do find it difficult to understand me. There is times right, that people to, don't understand me. There's a lot of things that you have to do with the pacing of your voice. You have to make sure that you pronounce every word extremely clearly, and that's hard to do because we run over our words. So I always advocate for having a voice actor and we we work very closely we have an audiobook partner who has studios and actors and they people audition to do your book uh, but mostly it's not uh, they're actors they're voice actors and that's what you want and uh, to make another professional product and what's for doing the audio when you're outsourcing it what's kind of i mean obviously it depends on the word but if you're say a forty thousand uh, word book what, what's the typical cost that people should oh, expect I was afraid you were going to ask me that and i i want to tell you that mo are i think they're coming in at around two thousand dollars for about that length i actually in my notes i have what the act and what they charge you on is the finished product the the time, the length of time, the number of minutes of the finished product. There's a lot that goes into the audiobook. And the other thing I want to say about um, people wanting to record their own audiobook, it, it, it's kind of dicey for women because our voices can get really shrill and high, and we don't know that. And so voice actors know how to lower their voice a register and to make sure that they're not you know, screeching at the reader. <laughs> so, but um, audiobooks are a great way to go. There's not a whole lot of additional cost. And it's another way for you to, again, remember, we want to meet your market where it's already engaged. So another way to get your message out, because here's the most important thing. It's really not about the book. It's not about the book. It's about getting that message out of you and out into the world where it can do its work. And that takes many forms that you can pursue no excellent and for those that 
think about having a book, they always think about it, but never do. What could you tell them to actually make that step? Well, maybe the hardest part about writing your book is making the decision to do that. But once you do that, I have made it so easy for you. It it really is. And what I would invite your readers to do is I love to just talk to people about their book ideas. And we we approach the book writing in mastermind groups of like three to five people. So we have a really tight groups that are working together on their book and they're vetting each other's material and, and um, sharing back and forth. And we have a, a, another group that's starting in a few weeks. So what I would really love for your listeners to do is just to contact me and let's just chat about your book ideas. They can go to my website, which is thebookprofessor.com. Again, we're talking about books. I was a university professor, so the book professor. Across the top navigation, there's a link that says schedule a call with Nancy. And uh, we have many international clients that are from all over, you know, from South Africa to, I don't know, Tahiti <laughs> and such. And um, so we would just have a 30 minute Zoom call and we get to meet each other and just chat about your ideas. And I could tell you if I think that you have something and I, I'm honest with you, I don't, if you wanna write about your high school prom, it's probably not gonna be <laughs> anything that we would be interested in publishing. And I will tell you that, but most people just need, okay, here, here's the thing. You're the only one who has your story you're the only one who can do it. And a lot of times people think, well, I've just had this life and it's just not very interesting. And when I look at it from another angle and I think, look at what you've done and how you've helped these people. And they're like, well, who am I to write a book? And I'm like, who are you to keep this to yourself? This is what we're here for. We're here to offer people hope and help. Don't keep those things inside when you can actually have create a bigger platform and have your voice and your message broadcast to so many others. And, you know, sometimes we don't even understand the impact we're having on other people because you, you lose the face-to-face -face kind of relationship, but man, you can have a big impact. And I think that's what we all really want to do with our lives. Absolutely, absolutely. And just on a booking, because uh, I, I use Calendly and I've been playing around with a few others, but I see you use Time Trade, I believe it is. I'm just curious right. what 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 kind of, you know, what, how you find that, that you've used that and the advantages to it. Oh, I love Time Trade. Well, I, I think I started using it before Calendly was active. Um, so when I, like I said, if you go to my website and there's a link that says, schedule a call with Nancy, it takes you to my time trade and you get to pick out whenever, you know, you're available to talk based on what's available on the calendar. But I, I like it. And it also integrates with my CRM, which is Entreport. So it keeps track of, you know, all those back end things that as a business owner, you want to know. Brilliant. And just finally, with uh, social media, I always like to ask people what they find serves, especially for what you're doing, because there's so many different platforms out there. What do you think serves you best? Uh, I've tried them all. And I have to tell you, my audience lives on LinkedIn. So we work with, you know, business people, coaches, speakers, and where I find the most traction is on LinkedIn. But you always have to keep yourself in front of people all the time or they're not going to remember you. And one of the things that I have incorporated into my weekly practices is that twice a week, I do about a two minute short video about something. It's usually something I've screwed up in my own life and I relate it to writing, <laughs> but I do that twice a week and post it on LinkedIn and just keeps you in front of people. Brilliant, brilliant. Nancy, totally enjoyed our conversation. I know you mentioned the website, but you might mention it again and any other kind of links that you want uh, included in the show notes. Yeah, it's uh, thebookprofessor.com. And like I said, there's a link, schedule a call with Nancy across the top navigation. And you can find me on LinkedIn at, I think it's Nancy L. Erickson, if you want to connect. So, and I, I would love to do 
both. And seriously, let, let's talk about your book idea. I know I'm talking to your audience right now. I know you've thought about this. I know you have. And we have a way to make it easy for you and very enjoyable and ultimately rewarding because it's going to expand your business. Excellent. Yeah. I'll make sure I'll put the LinkedIn and your website on both the audio and the video. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you, Roy. So that's all for the Speaking Podcast. You'll find all our episodes on speakingpodcast.com. As mentioned, we're on BitChute and YouTube. And my podcast coaching, along with my other four podcasts, are on bio.link forward slash podcaster. Sure to give us a thumbs up, five star rating, share with your friends. Until next week, take care. <laughs>